Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen, wherever you may be around the world. I am Jay Campbell, and of course, you're watching the Jay Campbell Podcast. And I'm very excited today to be joined in my StreamYard virtual studio with a longtime friend, John Lewis, Dr. John Lewis. John, how are you, brother? Hey, brother. How's it going? I'm doing great. How about you? It's good to see you, man. I'm, I'm doing just as well as you are. You guys, let me give you guys this bio. It's very extensive. I'm going to summarize it. But John is a friend of the show. He's been on here before. Amazing guy. Past time, excuse me, past full-time and current voluntary associate professor in the Department of Psychiatry and Behavioral Sciences at UM, baby. Go Canes School of Medicine okay. and the founder and president of Dr. Lewis Nutrition. He's a diplomat, faculty member, and advisor of the Medical Wellness Association. He's been a principal investigator for over 30 different studies in his research career. I don't need to say anything else. John is an esteemed academic, but he also owns an amazing supplement company we're going to talk about today. Uh, and he's done a lot of landmark research for people that suffer from neurodegenerative disorder. So we'll be talking about all that stuff. Um, he's, again, just elite. I've met John in person at, what was it, AMMG, right? Is that where we yeah. met? Yeah. yeah. Uh, about, and, and by the way, which is so crazy. Time has flown so much since the scamdemic in the last two and a half years. Can you believe, dude? It's two and a half years. He's like, Jay, I don't think you and I have done a podcast in four years. And I was thinking, oh my God, it's been two years. And he's right. It's been since 2018, dude. You're right. Because we did the podcast after I met you at AMMG in 2018. Yep, exactly. Wow. Unbelievable. Okay, cool. So real quick, before I do your points and what we talk about the stuff, the nitty gritty, I kind of like to ask my, my um, podcast guests... And today for uh, tr uh, tracking purposes is Thursday, April 28th. Like, you know, what is your take, John, now that, you know, allopathic medicine has basically come to a standstill, right? Like the trust of allopathic medicine from the last two years is now at an all time low. And, you know, I like to say that, you know, people that, you know, buy your products and listen to me. Uh, you know, already have taken wellness into their own hand, right? And they also understand the difference between sick care, illness medicine, and wellness, functional health. So it's like, where do you right now, you know, as a researcher, as a physician, as a supplement company owner, where do you see the world going in the next two to five to 10 years? Wow, Jay, that's a great question. By the way, it's great to see you again, too. It's been Thank way you, too brother. Thank you, brother, for having me today. Of course. Um, you know, that's a great question. I mean, what what in the world has happened to us in the last couple of years? You know, not just the United States or Canada, but really the whole world. It's kind of like we're living in bizarro world today. <laughs> the matrix <laughs> has collapsed, John. It, it really has. And as you mentioned, you know, there are so many people that have succumbed to, let's call it the mass psychosis. That's what I refer to it as. I'm not obviously not the only person. Lots of people refer to it as that. So if we can't get people to break out of this psychosis, uh, I'm, I'm really concerned, not just for any one particular country. I'm actually concerned for the human, you know, the hu humanity. I'm concerned right. for our species. I think this is a species level um, po uh, point, if you will, where we've got to make really we've got to make people who are, are not able to see it, see it. I don't know how we do that. I, I'm not. You know, mental health is not really my thing in terms of psychology and, you know, helping people to understand, well, how do I, you know, self-assess and how do I understand what's really going on here? It's way beyond education. I mean, I've got some really intelligent friends who are very highly educated and yet they've succumbed to right. the mass psychosis. Well, look, so so let's stay there and we have to be careful. So we have to speak in code, right, because I, I want this right. podcast to not be deleted. Of course. Uh, but yes, I mean, so so obviously, guys, you who are listening, John is a friend of the Jay Campbell show. <laughs> and we speak about things that, you know, other people won't speak about. But look, dude, Malone and what's the other guy that's been on Rogan's show? They call it mass formation hypnosis, right? right? Yeah. You call it psychosis because you are a psychiatric professor. Right. And let's be real. This is a psychosis. These people totally. are hypnotized due to the vibration of fear. And as you know, when you're in fear, your autonomic nervous system goes whoop and stops. And so those people have now a cyclical drip of nonstop fight or flight hormones, cortisol. And you're right, John, they're literally stagnated. I watched a video yesterday. I wish I had it right now, but I don't know where it is. And I'm not going to delay our podcast to show you. 
I watched a woman who's a 20 year old girl in Canada because the person that took the video interviewed her after. And that's how I know, but I, I, I'm not kidding you on this. It's, 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 it's cruel and inhumane to watch and observe and to like, not feel, you know, truly moved by it. But John, mm-hmm. this woman wears her mask, chews up, I mean, uh, cuts her food, you know, literally to put the food in her mouth, moves the mask up at like a hundred miles an hour, puts the food in her mouth, pulls the mask back down and then like slowly chews and masculates. And then the same thing over and again. And this video was taken by a person in the restaurant who had observed her doing this for, cause she comes there every single day at the same time. And dude, it's the most, it's harrowing, but it, it, it serves a point of what you're talking about, which is, these people have had their consciousness captured. Exactly. They are not capable to discern the truth about COVID or whatever it is, which right. is, as you know, less than 1% of healthy, otherwise normal population people can die. In fact, John, this is the truth. And somebody said this to me before, and I didn't believe it. So I fact checked it myself. I'm not a Google <laughs> fact checker. <laughs> and it's this is a true this is a true story. If you're a healthy person, you have a greater chance of dying in a great white shark attack than you do COVID. And that's a fact. People right. are like, that's not true. You know, people will say, that's not true, Jay. My uncle died of COVID. It's a really sinister disease. Uh, okay, how does that have to do with anything? Again, statistically, less than 1% of people who are otherwise healthy, which, John, we have to talk about that because there aren't a lot of healthy people in the United States anymore or anywhere in the West, right? Exactly. Everybody is comorbid. Everybody is metabolically deranged. Most people are obese. The, the latest statistic, and this is insane, for, uh, 80% of people in America, men and women over the age of 40, are obese. It's unreal. Obese. Obese, not overweight, obese. So John, who cares about the V? You know, all these people like in our community are like, oh, these people are going to have autonomic disease, you know, and dysregulation. And a lot of them are just going to stroke out and myocarditis, this and that. Who gives a shit? 80% of the population is diabetic now. Exactly. Exactly. What happened to all the discussion about heart disease, diabetes, cancer, depression, all these different things that have been killing us for decades. And yet all of a sudden this mystery virus appears in the last couple of years. And now every, everyone's lost their damn minds, but yet all the chronic disease is still there. It didn't go away. Oh, it's now, it's now, it's now exacerbated. I mean, dude, look, if 80% of people over the age of 40 in the West, let's just say the West, let's not even say the U S because all you have to do is go to Canada and Mexico and you see the same shit. Right. Right. And again, we, you and I know it's what you talk about every day. It's why you make your supplements. I mean, you know, people have been attacked from all angles, the air, the water, the plastics, the GMO, the EDCs, you know, the thiolates, the fluoride. I mean, I can go on and on and on. Right. But at the end of the day, at the end of the day, if that amount of people are now deranged because as I say in all my lectures, and I know you know this, but the greatest deterrent to any of the diseases of aging is metabolically active tissue, which is ultimately muscle. So when you don't have any muscle and you're really obese, you're going to die. And you're going to die at a lot earlier age than someone who's not like you is, right? And that's just statistical fact. So dude, who gives a shit about the V and what might happen? I mean, these people are on the death train you know, to die within the next five to 10 years. And John, you know, the biggest thing about it, and I think, you know, this is the thing that was the one thing they didn't see coming. You know, again, when I say they, who are they? Well, whoever's the architect, the NWO, the Illuminati, <laughs> right? the puppet masters. Who, they didn't realize that they were also going to cause a systemic collapse and failure of the systems that, pay, that make their money. Because, John, you and I know allopathic medicine will not be able to sustain a collapse like this when 30 to 40 percent of people die. I mean, how are they going to keep the system going and the pills being prescribed? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. They're cutting off their customers. Right. I mean, they're they're wiping out a big segment of their customers. I mean, look at look at your typical diabetic. That guy is on insulin, metformin, glucophage, whatever, for 30, 40 years. Now he's gone. They've wiped him out and they've lost that customer. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. So, I mean, look, 
it's a crazy world that we're living in right now. But, you know, there is, like I always say, I'm glass half full guy at the end of the day. I like to point out the bad stuff, but I'll, I'll you know, ultimately say that, you know, people like us are, you know, the beacons or the harbingers of the future. And the future is really creating a society that has, you know, light at the end of the tunnel, you know, supplements like yours that people buy that, you know, keep them away from the bullshit that big pharma gets them addicted to. Uh, you know, I mean, we could go on and go on and, and, and rabbit hole, but I want to obviously talk about some of the points that you have today, but uh, it's funny because I was saying off air to John, you guys today on this podcast, that it's, we were talking about this stuff before the scandemic happened. In fact, if you've gone back and you look at our podcast, we probably were talking about a lot of these concepts and we were saying like, wow, man, it doesn't look good. Right. And then that happened. So it was almost like it was programmed, but let me just, let's, let's talk a little bit about, um, conventional medicine from a standpoint of, we just said it's going to collapse, right? Like right. again, trying to treat diseases, you know, there's no way to treat the disease. They want to bandaid the symptoms. They want to, you know, never, ever look at the root cause. But do you feel though, that this will open the doors for, you know, practitioners, um, you know, supplement company owners, um, that are in the wellness functional health space? Is this going to be the bastion, the prime needle mover that will finally get those people the time and the, you know, the acclaim and the exposure? I mean, do you see society finally leaving that sick care model to, 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 to folks like yourself? That is a great question. In fact, I think, you know, we've had so much discussion lately about what's the DEI acronym, diversity, equity, inclusion, and everybody is focused on what is it, race, sex, and then gender, whatever that is. I, that's a whole different conversation, obviously, but the one they leave out every single time in their argument is health status. And what it seems like we're becoming, Jay, is a society based on much more related to health than, you know, your race or your sex. I mean, it's just very obvious when you look at folks like us, and I, I say us who are, you know, into our health, taking care of our bodies. We want to have a good quality of life. We want to be functional and not dependent on the system. That to me is so much more important than all these discussions about racial inequity, sexual inequity, gender inequity. Inequity. I mean, I just get so tired of all of that rhetoric and uh, and hyperbole. But I think, in addition to that, you're you're so on target, uh, at least in my opinion, in terms of we really are at a tipping point in terms of the average person's health. I mean, you just said it. Eighty percent of Americans are obese. I think according. To the latest data, actually, men are now more obese than right. women. Is the first right. time that happened. I don't right. know, maybe ever. So I don't know, you know, what's going on with men surpassing women in just the last. Oh, I, 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 dude, I that's what I do every day. I live and breathe that. That's the collapse of testosterone. So because of the same reasons we already talked about, but I, I you keep going. But that's that's the answer. I mean, literally, sure. when that's men don't have testosterone, as you know, they have no ability to burn calories. Testosterone is lipolytic. Dude, this is all combined together. You know that. But that's the reason. But anyway, continue. But yeah, so uh, I think it's an opportunity, you know, as we uh, as we say in, in some situations, a teachable moment where people have the opportunity to actually learn that they can they can take their power back. They don't have to give their power away to a physician's office, a clinic, a hospital, whatever. It's so unfortunate that people are led to believe that chronic disease is an inevitability of aging. It's absolutely not. I know plenty of older people who are in very good health, but it's because they eat well. They exercise every day. They supplement with certain key nutrients right. and, and other phytonutrients. They sleep enough. They manage their stress. They don't smoke. They don't use tobacco. They limit their alcohol intake. All these things go into being healthy, as you well know. And so I think there's a great opportunity to get more people into that ship as opposed to on the drowning ship or the sinking ship that most people are currently on, where they just think, oh, well, there's nothing. Prevention is not even a word in their vocabulary. They just think, I'm going to eat like crap. I'm never going to exercise. I don't even think about dietary supplements. Those are all bogus. And then when I get sick, I'm going to run to a physician who's going to load me up with synthetic things. And then I'm going to get even more sick as the years go by. And then, like we were saying earlier, that's now the customer that Big Pharma wants, somebody who's not dead, somebody who's not healthy, somebody in between. And then that's a customer for 30 or 40 years until he or she checks out. But I totally agree with you. I mean, if there was never a point in our society in the last century, at least, to say, 
what are we doing with this thing that we call health care? Let's actually make it health care, not chronic disease management. Beautifully stated, brother. I mean, again, you're preaching to the choir. I'm preaching to your choir. It's the same thing. Uh, So look, man, from a positive standpoint, I do believe that what you just said is true. The tipping point, we're actually past the tipping point. Like I see, I see a parallel society already being built Mm -hmm. with people like you and I leading it, you know, from the front, from, you know, the, the understanding and the awareness that disease first stems from a spiritual you know, internalized trauma, amputation, whatever you want to say. It's like, you know, my wife always used to say this and I always give credit to her, Monica, you know, because she was like, most people don't care about their health until they don't have their health. Right. right? So you think about all these people who work really hard and obviously there's not many of those people left in today's society either, but for the guys in our generation who have busted their ass And they got to their 10 million or whatever in the bank. And John, as you know, they're literally inflamed, 40% body fat, you know, one, as I like to call it, one foot in the grave. So who gives a shit that they just made all that money? They can't spend it. They're literally near death, right? So there's all, everything in life is about balance. But the first awareness is taking responsibility for yourself and realizing that it's okay, you know, to not externalize all your problems, your bills, your issues, and that to become self-empowered, right? So that's step number one. And I think most of the people watching the show are like, yeah, Jay, we know. That's why we're watching you. You talk about that every show, right? So I think step number two is uh, walking away from sick care and illness medicine. You know, I always say, like, if you're still that guy or that gal who talks about, but my copay is only $40, that you are – confused. Your priorities are backwards. I mean, I always say this, if you cannot, and I don't care what your economic level is, if you cannot spend $2,500 to $10,000 a year on your personal health, your priorities are inverted. You know, in my courses, I have a document that I've created, which is probably the best thing I've ever done. That's a PDF that shows the financial costs of not optimizing your health and your biological systems. Because dude, as you know, one myocardial infarction, type two diabetic diagnosis and disease management and risk after. These are hundreds of thousands of dollars in cost that your benefits ain't paying, dude. Isn't it it great how we go through life and people pay this $1,200 to $1,700 to $2,000 a month for their wife and two or three kids. And then all of a sudden, when they go to use it for something that they have, they're like, yeah, I have benefits. And they look at you and say, not for this. You don't. Right. And so people don't ever even understand this kind of shit. You got to live it. You got to right. live it. It's going to happen to you. You know, I always tell people, and I know you know this, but like, you're really only paying for benefits in case you're in a life threatening car accident or some fucking tragic act of God okay. incident. And you need to be life lighted right? Because the rest of it is utter bullshit. That's a whole other topic for a whole other podcast. But so that's one and two. One, self-awareness. Two, disconnecting from the bullshit healthcare system. Right. Three is, okay, you've done the first two things, which by the way are the hardest steps. Number three is, how do I find the John Lewis's out there? Well, you fucking listen to the Jay Campbell's and the Ben Greenfield's and the Mark Sisson's And, you know, there's a number of women and men I'm not talking about. And there's plenty of us out there, thank God now. Mm -hmm. But that's that's how you do it. And again, number one and number two are the steps that almost nobody takes. Very few people are self-aware. I mean, like you said, bro, I mean, what? 80% of people are fucking under a delusion right now. They're dreaming. Exactly. There's still people sitting on airplanes wearing masks. It's unreal. I mean, think about that, right? So so that, number one, 80% of people... Not there yet. Hey, you know what? Hope you get there. But if you've gotten past number one and you're in that 20% and maybe it's only 15%, stop with your healthcare bullshit. Stop with your copay. Stop with, but my in-network doctor, I got, I I, I keep saying this. I keep saying this, but go online. Dr. Google is your best source of information when they're not blocking the real information and find somebody local who you know, s- s- preaches the way that I'm speaking and John is talking about in these podcasts. It's, it's not that hard. It really isn't, John. Exactly. No, it's not. We're not talking about 
sending people to Mars or hell even digging for <laughs> gas in the Gulf of Mexico. I mean, not this is not technical stuff that's so difficult. It's really about motivation, behavior, and just do what do you want? What do you prioritize? And I couldn't have said it better what you said related to expenses. Like people are much more concerned about kind of car that he drives, the house right. he lives in, clothes he wears, if he's got the right jewelry or whatever. And meanwhile, yeah. when he opens his mouth and puts something in it, he couldn't care less. And talk it's about- It's crazy, dude. Problems. But I mean, again, people are, how do I say this without sounding cruel? It's the lowest common denominator, right? Like we now know that so society is driven by the mean and the mean watches CNN or Fox or MSNBC right. or- and, and, and so it's it, like you said, it really is, you know, again, Malone called it mass formation, formation hypnosis, but it's a psychosis. Again, you're more qualified or as qualified. I think he's a psychiatrist too. But the bottom line is, is that people have to take responsibility for their personalized healthcare. You know, as I, I always say in my books, you have to become the proactive scientist of your own health. It, it's, it's literally right. that simple. Allopathic medicine will not help you. In fact, all it wants to do is manage your, your symptoms. That's it. It wants to drain your bank account. So again, step outside, you know, of that mindset. Let me ask you, because I want to go deeper about your new products. And, and, and by the way, dude, or not dude, but to you, John, um, thank you for all the, pro the products that you sent me, the Cogni Nourish and stuff like that. I, I don't know if I ever even told you. I think I sent you a couple of emails, but uh, Monica's dad uses that now and actually buys it. Um, he doesn't have by diagnosis yet he's a disaster on a health standpoint but uh he he loves that stuff when we gave it to him like three years ago he keeps buying it so uh no i know you have other new stuff we're going to talk about but i wanted to thank you in case i forgot about that but that's the question or that's kind of the point is the, the neurodegenerative disease disorders and why they're rising and it's very simple but i want you as an expert to talk about it it's type 3 diabetes bro it's the same right. shit these exactly. people are destroying themselves through their horrible diet, their lack of exercise, their sedentary lifestyles, the blue light, you know, destroy de desecration and degradation of their cells. And then basically their chemoreceptors fail. And it's the same shit, you know, in the pancreas, but then it's the same shit in the brain, right? Like everything fails there too. And eventually you just can't stop the insulin cascade and all the other biochemical substances that are causing havoc and wrecking you know, the senescent cells and the free oxy radical devastation. I mean, you just have all this nasty biochemical gunk that you can't get rid of from your lifestyle. But can you talk a little bit about that? Like how big of an issue is that now? Absolutely. Well, I think you summarized it pretty well, but obviously that, uh, that whole story has the one common denominator of pretty much uh, everything related to, you know, every organ system and that is inflammation. So in this case, neuroinflammation is obviously a little bit more specific, but to your point of all these different behavioral factors or variables that drive that inflammation story, eventually over time, you know, you, the body just can no longer even comprehend it. It doesn't know yeah. what to do with it. So as we, as we both know, inflammation, I like to say this when I lecture about inflammation is obviously we need some level of inflammation. If we have trauma, if we cut ourselves, if we get hurt, Right. That is actually a very good thing. And, and, you know, that's a normal response to have our immune system activate. And then that inflammation goes to that area of trauma or damage to help heal it. But that's very, very different from the kind of inflammation that you just mentioned. And that is all this crappy food being sedentary, all the stress that people have today, all these other environmental um, toxins and exposures. Dude, think of the people that fucking sleep with their phone next to their head at night. I know it. I know it. Dude, how many people? I talk about this all the time, John. Well, let's first back up. Let's get really tinfoil. The poly res. Okay, so I just got this myself, and I was actually Googling this myself to see what this is. So this is one of these new cases that has the magnet thing to it, right? Because you can charge it wirelessly. So I have one right. of these little things that I can put right next to my screen so that if I do a live stream, I can go live on other platforms, right? So I bought that. But then I start looking into this. Dude, this is like a military grade polycarbonate resin polymer plastic that's going through your hands every time you touch it, fucking up your endocrine system. Mm. Step one. 
Now you got this thing, right? This is an iPhone. I don't have the newest and greatest update. I haven't updated. Fuck them. But this is two years ago. Mm -hmm. And it still is putting out, if you get, what is it called? It's not a, I forget what, it, you can measure the EMF grade of something. There's, it's not a Geiger counter, but I forget the tech. It doesn't matter. John, right. this stuff will literally kill a human being. That's how powerful the frequency emitter from this wow. technology. Okay, so you guys just got those two things. And then people literally sleep when it next to their head and look at it at night. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> I mean, we're laughing about it on the podcast, but can you imagine? I mean, there's no data yet on what cell phones are doing to the brain. Nope. Exactly. Zero data. And what, what data there are probably have been suppressed. Covered and suppressed. Just as all the EDC, all the endocrine disrupting chemicals that the EPA has suppressed since the 70s and 80s, because they know. John, um, Dr. Anthony J, you know, in his landmark book, Estro Generation, which I've had him on the show a couple of times, he's a good friend of the show. He literally said that we now know that if you take female, I'm sorry, male fish and you put them in any freshwater stream, aqueduct, tributary or lake in North America within 12 months, they are female. Wow. So think about that. So you wow. asked about why are men so weak? Why are men so fat? Why are men now inflamed? Well, they don't have any testosterone. They're becoming women. And this is, again, by design. I, I, you know, again, mm. by who? Like you said, I love that. I'm going to use that from now on. <laughs> you know, whoever is doing it, this is clearly by design, John. It's all by design. This is a giant multi-prong attack. Exactly. Yeah, it's unreal. I mean, we're living through an age of the greatest experimentation with these messenger RNA uh, injections. We have no idea what those things long term are doing. And so we have, uh, I don't know, I think I saw an estimated 4 billion people have taken at least one injection. That's and then those, those of us who have not, we're like the placebo or the control. Right. So, you yeah. know, we'll see in a few years what happens to these folks who have taken these injections and... And God only knows with all the other endocrine disruptors, you've mentioned a couple of them that are so ubiquitous in the environment and the inner, I mean, there's just no way to even comprehend all the interplay and all the interactions of all these different factors and variables. There's no way to account for all this stuff. You can't, John. You, no. re you really can't. And, and, and honestly, I love you, man. It's, it's tough for people to even, you know, wrap their head around it, meaning people like us. I mean, again, 80% are in a psychosis, the, you know, we're crazy, we're tinfoilers. Right. But like for the people that are open-minded and clearly awake and aware to what's happening, it, you, it's really difficult to wrap your head around it. I mean, if I was to say, you know, from an Occam's razor standpoint, you know, the easiest solution or the, or the most present is the easiest to, to observe, they're doing this by design for what? Mm -hmm. Are they going to land in their ships and colonize us? Are they going to get rid of all the strong people? Are they going to eat the weak right. and mRNA infected. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I, again, I don't want to like, you know, go beyond the merits of this podcast or this show, but it, it is right. very fascinating when you think like what you said with all of these experimental things happening to us. I mean, again, from all causes. And by the way, this is not something that just started people with the scamdemic. I mean, right, clearly, exactly. clearly, I mean, John, and, and again, Anthony J is the real trans transcendent guy in exposing this. But, dude, the birth control from the 70s and 80s that we gave to women, that's that all washed off in the water supply. So right. that's also part of this weaker men, uh, you know, women that are like heavily masculinated. It's all like an inversion. Every, you know, men have become weaker and women have become harder. And then, you know, the overlords have like pushed people that it's OK for this and that like women should be bringing home the bacon and the man should be the, sup, you know, the. The, right. eff, the effeminate, you know, sitting there. I mean, I don't even want to get into it. You kind of mentioned it, but it's all so backward, dude. And, and, and truthfully, and this is my point, this is biblical. We right. are literally in a spiritual war. This is a war between, I'm sorry, good and evil. It's not, Absolutely. if you don't see that at this point, then guess what? You failed the test because all is being revealed at this point. And again, I won't be or even claim to be smart enough to summarize the opposing forces. But it's very clear that it's a perversion of creation. 
So whatever you think God is or isn't, it doesn't matter because this is an attack on creation. Why do you think they have trans this and trans that? Why are they making the, the women more like men and the men more like women? This is a giant perversion of creation. And again, it has nothing to do with religion or even what you believe spiritually. Creation is observed in nature and in science. Okay. It's observed. And as you know, they're even attacking science. Now they're changing science with, again, with all these different uh, identifications and stuff. It's insane, bro. It is insane. Who, who would have thought that biology, biology 101 about male and female sex would be up for debate? Who in their right it's mind? It's not up for debate other than people that have the mind perversion. I call it a, it's a, it's a parasite. They, they yeah. really do have a virus or a parasite that has invaded their minds that is not allowing them to see clearly. And again, you know, I don't even want to get into debates with people. You know, there'll be people that will attack this show. It's a great show, obviously. And by the way, thank you for being on it. But like, thank if you, you do not see or understand what John just said, then again, don't watch my show. And if you come on and leave me comments, I'll block you. But there is no debate. There is male, which is divine masculine, and female, which is divine feminine. That is how nature slash God slash source slash the universe, whatever you want to call it, created the differentiation of human beings. And I would say all of life force, right? Because you have male and female sex. And yes, there are asexual sex in animal kingdom, but not in masculine and feminine women. This is a fucking perversion, John. Exactly. I've said, I know my friends must be tired of me saying it, and I know that humanity has gone through many tragic bumps in the road over our recorded history. But in my personal opinion, we are living in the most unprecedented level of evil in our yes. existence. The yes. evil is And again, that's why I said it's biblical. It, this is biblical. And again, Yes, the Bible has been co-opted and corrupted, but there's amazing uh, spiritual precepts and foundational principles that are in there. But as the Bible even told all of us, one must have eyes to see and ears to hear. And again, 80% don't have that, John. Right. So that's why the evil is getting away with what they're getting away with. But for the people that do have eyes to see and ears to hear, we know what's going on. This is simple exactly. stuff. It's real simple. You see it everywhere you go. They control entertainment. They control media, they control the internet, they control all content production other than people like us. Yeah. But people like us aren't allowed to have giant platforms. They suppress us. I'm shadow banned everywhere. I've had the same subscribers on my YouTube channel for three years. I haven't had one added subscriber in like three years on my YouTube channel. How is that possible? My videos, which by the way, this is a, one of my most profound podcasts by far because we're talking very freely and openly, will probably have 300 or 400 views before they'll probably give me a strike and say, you can't talk about what you were talking about on that podcast. Even though you are a licensed medical professional. Wow. Because John, that's what they usually say to me. You're not a licensed medical professional. You're not allowed to speak about the V or the C or wearing masks. Well, I can't wait to what they say about this one because you are. <laughs> You're the golden wow. key. We'll see. We'll see what happens. But let's talk about your new product. Um, again, I talked about Cogni Nourish. I've talked about a lot of the amazing stuff that you've had in our past podcast. You know, you work with curcumin and turmeric, and you know you understand the profound uh, inflammation suppressing. Um, capabilities that that supplement has, which again is randomly found in nature. I mean, what the mm -hmm. East, the Indians have been using turmeric, you know, in all of their cooking and their food for what? Thousands of years, right? Thousands, right? Exactly. Thousands, right? Again, barely even known in the West, you know, until smart people like you start talking about it. And again, I'm very outspoken about my use of uh, turmeric. I mean, I, I take sometimes when I'm inflamed six grams a day, right? Sure. Like, I mean, Prof profound inflammation suppressor, especially from hard training athlete and people that lift and, and lift weights and stuff. But uh, talk about a little bit about your new product. Sure, I'd be happy to. So daily brain care is kind of an extenuation of, you know, the work that I've been doing since you've known me at least and actually going back farther than that. And I think I'm trying to remember there were a couple of new papers that we've published since I was on your show the last time. So Whereas I think the first time when you and I talked about neurodegeneration, I was pretty focused on just Alzheimer's. But then since then, we've had a couple of papers we published from our uh, multiple sclerosis study. So it's still within that realm, obviously. I mean, there are not as many people affected by MS as there are Alzheimer's. 
But daily brain care is just uh, it's, it's an extension of my work and it continues to be effective for people that have, you know, not just a neurodegenerative disorder, but obviously people like us who want to prevent that stuff from happening to us in the first place. So I continue to have uh, practically on a daily basis customers telling me how much, you know, this polysaccharide blend helps them with whatever the case may be. Again, because of, you know, marketing, uh, I'm calling it daily brain care, but as you well know, nutrition works systemically. It's not just one organ system right. or another, but exactly. uh, if, if, uh, if you've a chance or if you know if you have a chance at some point you can watch a couple of the testimonial videos I have on my website a lady with Alzheimer's who I mean literally Jay just made such a 180 degree change and it's you know I, there was one thing that I I know we definitely didn't talk about this the last time but some I can't claim credit for this but I was talking to somebody who said to me one time you know John there's never been somebody that we refer to as a survivor of Alzheimer's disease, like right. you're all the time survivors of heart disease, survivors cancer. of cancer, yeah. you know, all these other diseases, but you've never heard one person say, oh, that's a survivor of Alzheimer's disease. I wow. thought, wow, that, that was really profound. Like, that's an amazing, that's an amazing way of looking at it. Well, when you look at this lady uh, in the, in the video, I, I mean, calling her a survivor, I, I don't know, maybe that's an extreme representation, but this lady went from literally not saying anything other than hello to me and my film crew when we went to her house. And then within six weeks after we went back, after she'd been on daily care every day for four, uh, four scoops per day, uh, the daughter, you know, was the primary caregiver and still is. And, and just, it was unbelievable, Jay, to walk into this house and see the shift awesome. in energy. I mean, this lady was walking around the house. She was getting herself something to drink. She she was playing with their dogs. And That's this was amazing. a lady who did nothing, literally nothing, for at least an hour and a half, two hours when we were there the first time. And wow. We come in the second time, she's glowing, you know, she's talking. I mean, I don't know. Again, maybe we cannot say survivor of Alzheimer's, but right. this lady yeah. had let's say a 180 degree turnaround, and it was just amazing to see it. And of course. As we all know, with Alzheimer's, it's not just the person who's affected. It's the primary caregiver and then the secondary and tertiary caregivers as well. So it's a whole unit of people who are actually affected by this disease, not just one person. But that's the thing that drives me every day, Jay. I mean, I'm, I'm continuing to work in this realm because of, again, the, the extreme lack of any type of efficacy from a conventional medical perspective. <laughs> I mean, it's just pathetic. And uh, that drug that was um, provisionally approved last year, I mean, what a farce that was. I think there were three people from the FDA who ended up resigning off of the board, the approval board, once that was provisionally approved. But that drug costs like $60,000 a year. Unbelievable. It's by 60K a year. 60K a year. So that literally eliminates 99.5% of the Western population from getting it. How many people can afford that? So only the elite, only the most wealthy and elite on the planet, which is where this place is going, John. They they truly have already, you know, shown their hands, the puppeteers with the basic universal basic income. They're they're right now, as you know, attempting to engineer a engineer a financial collapse. I mean, that's what this all is with the whole supply chain bullshit from last year, the food shortages now, gas, oil. Uh, I mean, you know, it's now 39% the cost of food increase across the board from January 1st to right now, April 28th. I saw that literally today. So, I mean, again, this is all by design. They are trying to push you and me, people who are entrepreneurs attempting to make an honest living, you know, and, and we're a professional class, you know, we're not schlubs, you know, driving right. trucks, you know, loading, right. you know, uh, forklifts or refrigerators. And I'm not making fun of those guys. Cause I know a lot of those people watch the show and they, they're paid well, but you know, we worked, we went to school and we did all the game. We played the fucking game and they're right. still trying to take away our, our ability to make money because that's what they want. They want 20 of them. I mean, it was just in the LA, but I'm not LA times. And by the way, before people say it, no, I don't read the New York times, but I am on Twitter and I do get links sent to me all the time. And that's what they had on Tuesday. They literally showed John that, 20 people and they're really families 
control 98% of the world's wealth now, 20. It's right in the New York Times. Wow. Fact check me. Uh, and again, that was on today's what? The 28th. So it was the 24, 20, 26. It might've been, the, it was either 26 or the 25th of April. But here's the crazy thing. Elon Musk, what kind of a scam is that guy? All of this shit. He has estimated right. to be worth $300 billion. Wow. John, the guy's never made a profit in a single company that he ever ran his entire life. Talk to anyone that ever worked for him when he was at PayPal before he left PayPal to Tesla to SpaceX. I mean, he's a cutthroat. He's, I mean, again, you know, mm -hmm. I don't want to make this, this is about your show. I don't want to like go off the deep path, but you kind of led me there. I mean, I always say this about all those people. I don't believe any of them are legit. I believe they're put there. You know, my right. grandpa told me when I was a little kid that Jay, he said, Jay, he said, Jay boy, if you come across a tortoise on top of a lamppost, it's a good idea. He was put there. <laughs> That's what he told me. When I was a little kid. So it's like, it's like you see all these people, and I don't have to name the names, Bill Gates, Steve Jobs, Richard Branson, Elon Musk, you know, Jeffrey, what's his name that owned Amazon, Bezos. I mean, it's like, are these people who they claim themselves to be, or are they just, quote unquote, put there? Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, when you really start doing your deep dive research and you start seeing how Jeff Bezos never paid taxes his whole life, but became the biggest, most wealthiest guy in the world because, you know, Amazon doesn't make a profit, uh, John. Right, right. It just, you know, became the biggest company of all time. But no, it doesn't make a profit. You know, we break even every year. Right, right, of course. And the and same thing with Elon Musk. Never made a profit. So all of this stuff to me is a ruse. Again, you know, my buddy yesterday, I did a live stream with my buddy yesterday to keep the people at the bottom praying, paying, and obeying. That's a statement, right? Wow. Think about that. Praying, paying, and obeying. Yep. That's the deal. That pretty That's much says deal. it all, doesn't it? And so you got 20 people <laughs> or families or groups running the entire planet at this point, dude. I mean- it's crazy to wow. think that that's where we where we are. But again, I will say, you know, I will be class glass half full, positive, you know, new age, new golden age day. That somehow we're going to make it through. That somehow their empire that they're attempting to build through this NWO, you know, NW, you know, what do they call it? The Great Reset. It'll collapse. Right. It's going to collapse inward on them because they can't manage the population sure they're trying to kill most of us off that's obvious we already disclaimed that in this podcast exactly but i don't think that we will john i mean again in my podcast yesterday and, and i'm talking about paul wallace he said somehow invariably and inevitably the light of truth survives mm -hmm. and the light of truth continues to wedge its way until it becomes a giant gulf and then it's up to the people to choose truth or falsehood. You know, as my friend, Dr. Hawkins would say, you either choose truth or you stay in falsehood. Mm -hmm. And again, 80% of people right now, John, love to wear their masks with the car window rolled up, rolling all over the place. Oh my God, I know. Well, I mean, imagine that's where you consciously are. That's cool. But for the people that aren't there, we're going to get that opportunity. And again, that's, you know, I'll just be, you know, half, half glass full guy, you know, Mr. Positivity and say that it's going to come. It doesn't look good. It definitely looks bleak. I mean, as the ancients would say, there's a lot of darkness before dawn. And I still think we're in the dark phase, but I do see it happening, John. I, I don't ask me how it will, but it's going to happen. And I really do believe that people like us, and there are thousands, if not millions of us now, thank God, right. you know, will be the people that will be, you know, the leaders at the forefront when we break through to what I, what I would like to call the new earth, because that's what's coming. I really, in my heart of hearts, believe that, you know, people will say, yeah, you're full of shit. But I'm like, you know what? <laughs> maybe I am, but maybe it happens <laughs> in the next lifetime. Right. Maybe I literally have to get to the next lifetime. John, maybe in the next lifetime, you become this guy who's the king of the planet selling products that solve neurodegenerative disorder. You know what I mean? Like right. you, you just can't have a limiting belief. Cause I know, I mean, I, I will, I'll say, I'll talk to you off air, but uh, I've toiled for seven years, you know, yeah. putting out podcasts, creating content, selling supplements, doing all this stuff, you know, always doing the same shit that you do. 
Mm-hmm. And there's been so many times, bro, where I wanted to quit and give up and say, this is a fucking joke. Why am I doing this? You know, there's no value in this. But the key is to not give up and to continue to do it because it will be a point where you will be rewarded. And again, I, it's not about money or any of that stuff. It's just about, you know, how you feel rewarded. For me, rewarding is what you just talked about with that woman. You, you literally state that woman's physical existence. You changed her reality. And to me, that's what I live for too, is like serving. You know, I live for the emails when people say, Hey man, I started following your principles and you changed my life. You saved my, what my marriage, Absolutely. you know, my kids are doing this now. So it's like, that's what you and I live for. That's why we're healers. That's why we're here to serve. It's not about the money. The money comes, it's energy, right? It comes, it goes, it comes, it goes. But the real value is like in serving the greater good of humanity. And that's, Absolutely. and that's really what I think people like us are here to do, right? I couldn't have said it better. I totally agree with you. I, I mean, I, despite all the bad news and all the evil, I, I, I can't give up my mission. You know, I continue waking up every day thinking just like you. It's bleak. It's maybe the worst ever, but yet we're going to keep pushing forward and we're going to keep moving to the goal of helping the average person come out of the psychosis and, and understand, you know, the value of health and understand the value of you know, being human and not just giving all of that away and then basically sacrificing your existence. So whether it happens in this life or maybe the next one is definitely debatable. And I'm like you as well. I, I don't know. I don't have all the answers, but I certainly know that uh, I've been working in this area of nutrition and supplementation and exercise for many, many years. And I, I don't find any other thing that's as um, as rewarding and as valuable as being in this space. So I'm going to keep doing it till my last breath. I mean, that's that's who I am. That's awesome. I'm, gonna keep I'm, I'm the same way, brother. I can't say that better. I literally, I literally just launched. You'll laugh at this. I just launched my TikTok channel, even though I'm utterly retarded on it. I, I hired some little, you know, young kids to manage it for me. And they're like, what do you want to put on your bio? And I was just like, it just came to me. It's just so funny you just said that. I said, optimizing health and raising human consciousness until my last breath. Mm-hmm. And so you just said that too. And I literally just put that up there yesterday. So it's like, wow. We're talking about like minds, you know, yeah. Vulcan mind meld. Yeah. Um, okay. So just to end the show real quick. So first off, guys, obviously support the amazing people that come on the show. You can go to John's website. It's drlewisnutrition.com. Uh, if you have a relative or a family member that is suffering from any form of neurodegenerative disorder or disease, read the website first. He's got a lot of different products that are really, really good. You can obviously reach out to John. And if they wanted to, and obviously there's going to be people that watch this that are going to probably want to interview you also for their podcast. What's the best way you have them do that? I would have people email me at john at drjohnlewis.com. Okay, john at drjohnlewis.com. Yes. J-O-H-N. Got it. Brother, man, again, appreciate you coming on the show. Amazing. We'll talk here a second off air. Uh, Again, thank you. I'm privileged and humbled and honored whenever I talk to you. So thank Thank you. you. So guys, again, remember, always support the amazing folks that come on to Jay Campbell Podcast. Go to his website, drlewisnutrition.com, or email him at john at drjohnlewis.com. And remember, raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. We will see all of you guys very soon.